very simple. So we just uh, conservation law of mass, continuity equation, momentum conservation, and energy equation. But the only difference is that there are two energy equations because we separate them for electrons and for lattice separately, write them separately. So this is energy equation for energy equation for electrons, and this is energy equation for ions. And so what we have? We have a metal. So this is metal, this is his uh, boundary with vacuum. This is vacuum or water or some transparent media. media. Uh, this is ions and electrons. Uh, and this is penetration depth for electromagnetic wave. For optical electromagnetic wave, it's typically something like 50 atomic layers. And now we radiate uh, photons laser photons, and they are absorbed only by electrons. So electrons, so initially we have equal temperatures for electrons and ions, but after heating, uh, electrons becomes hotter because they absorb energy. And they absorb energy from this term. This is absorption term and they transfer part of this energy back to the ions. But this transfer is rather slow. Its power is much less than the power of laser. If we use femtosecond lasers with very bright flashes, therefore, they are hotter, much hotter than ions. And another important ingredient is this uh, electron heat conduction term. In metal, it is large. And this term transports energy absorbed at the skin depth here into the bulk of the metal. So this is electron heat flux going into the bulk. And it creates some so-called heat-affected zone near the surface. It also is nanoscale, uh, have nanoscale thickness, but typically it is something like five, ten times more thick than the skin layer. So thick, skin layer 10 nanometer, this is, and the heat-affected zone something like 100 nanometer. And here I just write some simple expression explaining why it is supersonic. In usual condition, heating is much more slower than the zonic acoustic wave propagations. The velocity, the rates of the heat transfer is usually subsonic, significantly subsonic. But in our case, it is supersonic. Why? This is just due to the fact that we Fermi velocity of electrons which transport this energy is two orders of magnitude higher than the speed of sound. Therefore, for some time, uh, this velocity, just uh, heat velocity, heat wave propagation velocity, it is larger than the acoustic velocity, which is small because the ions are heavy. Therefore, this heat-affected zone is created supersonically. Supersonically means that refraction propagation, so, and we heat, heat the system. Therefore, we rise pressure just because we rise energy, and we don't have time to expand, to release this energy, to release this pressure, to unload matter. We don't have time because it is supersonic. Therefore, pressure rise, and matter begin to unload to the vacuum side, and the refraction begin to propagate into the bulk. But 
this heat affected zone, heat affected zone is created before. So we, for, for hydrodynamic picture, we just immediately create a heated and pressurized layer, and after that, follow its unloading. So we consider this problem. We have, for example, it is a gold, it is typical situation in water, people illuminated by a femtosecond laser, and this process produces you nanoparticles somewhere at very late time, after pulse. But how it proceeds, it's still not well known. And we use, we use this uh, equation, just very simple hydrodynamic one-dimensional equation to describe uh, the unloading of gold. So gold is heated, it is unloaded into water, and what we see is, this is the pressure profile and density profile. This is density job on the gold water surface, and it moves into water whilst it uh, support the shock wave in the water. This is shock in the water, this is shock compressed water, this is contact, this is refraction wave, and this is compression wave going into the bulk of coal. And this is refraction wave. So if it will freely refract, it will be somewhere here. But water um, decelerating motion, and some layer appears, I call it atmosphere, I will explain why, where we gold know about existence of water. Outside this, la this layer, gold expands like freely, like without any water or... So this unloading, this unloading pro produce motion of the contact. The motion of the contact like a piston produce a shock in the water, and this is shock compressed water, this is density jump, because gold is 20 times more dense than water. And this is, at the later time, we see this uh, pressure wave, it is rather large amplitude, something like part of megabar going into the gold, and the shock going into the water, and we produce this, uh, this is condensed matter. Uh, this is, uh, therefore, when we expand it significantly, it began to nucleate, it began to uh, decay to small fragments. And this is region where it decay. Later in time, uh, this is sub-nanosecond sub stage, shock goes far away, this is the contact. And here, so this is the contact, this is so-called atmosphere. It, it, its motion is decelerated by water, therefore it moves more slowly. But this form region don't know about water. It moves freely. Therefore, it moves faster than the atmosphere. Therefore, it collides with atmosphere from this side. But the amount of mass in this uh, uh, foamy region is uh, limited. Therefore, after some time, it just all this mass go into the atmosphere. And after that, only vapor support atmosphere from the rear side. And here I just show how it looks like. This is one-dimensional simulation. So here this foamy region is like just fluctuation of density. But this is uh, three-dimensional molecular dynamic simulation. So you see this is atmosphere and this is uh, this foamy region for two time instance. And these fragments of the foam fall down, therefore the atmosphere becomes thicker, and also the water is heated, the blue uh, 
color means this is bulk water, deep blue, and this is light blue water, which is heated due to atomic, atomic, molecular, molecular uh, heat conduction in water. It is small, two orders of magnitude smaller than in metal, but it is enough to heat water near the contact. And this is enlarged view. You see this foamy region, which is attack, this layer, and the temperature drop down into the bulk. Therefore, the vapor pressure, also a saturation of vapor pressure drop down, drops down as temperature drops down. Therefore, this is, pre uh, this is vapor. It is dense here. Temperatures are order of 7,000 Kelvin. 5,000, 7,000, 8,000, something like this, near 10,000. Therefore, it is dense here and less dense far away. Here, just, I will show this movie twice. Here, I want just pay your attention to this, how this uh, foamy region too fast, so we have liquid fragments and vapor inside the cavities they move faster than the atmosphere, therefore they, in astrophysics, such process called accretion. So it accretes on this atmosphere. And why I call this uh, layer atmosphere? Because it is decelerated by water resistance to motion. And uh, thus we have some effective gravity here. This effective gravity produces uh, density and pressure drop in the atmosphere. Therefore, pressure here is higher than here. And this decelerate, this pressure gradient decelerate the atmosphere. And the shock in water propagate to large distance, up to millimeters and centimeters. And here I just normalize it. And what I want to emphasize that even for large, very large, uh, when it goes far away, it uh, amplitude decay and it becomes just a sonic wave, acoustic wave propagating in water. Uh, the bulk models of water is something like two GPA. So now it is 2000, so it is 0.2 GPA, so it is in linear regime. But still, the pressure here and pressure at contact are somehow comparable. So it is 10 times smaller, but it is some 10% value of the pressure at the shop. So the piston contact here and the pressure shock here are connected. And this is how the decay of the pressure takes place. So this is time after Heating, short heating, heating goes very short, just shorter than one picosecond, and after that, the pressure at the contact boundary fall down, and this is a shock. And it decreases, but the rate of decrease is not so high because it is supported by the foam, which attack it and support pressure. But when the foam is exhausted, no more mass in form. So this support decay. After that, it begins to drop faster. But then it is supported by saturation pressure. This is the temperature of atmosphere, heat in kilokelvin. So it is thousands of kelvin. And this is saturation pressure for gold. And we see that after this drop, it is supported by the saturation pressure, which is on the back side of the atmosphere. So at the back side, we have saturated pressure, evaporated, and it supports the atmosphere, motion of atmosphere at this time interval. And this is velocities of sh uh, contact, shock wave, and we take some analytical fit. It is necessary to, for us to calculate deceleration, because if you Numerically calculate, it will be very inaccurate. Numerically differentiate velocity. 
And after that, we use this. This is uh, expression for relateral instability uh, with viscosity. This is kinematic viscosity and surface tension. Both of we, we, the object is very small. It is just 100 nanomicron in the lateral dimension, and in this dimension also just few micron. Therefore, the scales are very small, just uh, 100, uh, from 10 to 100 nanometers. Therefore, all this, this viscosity, uh, surface tension and viscosity term, term, terms become very important. And, they, and the acceleration we take from the previous, from this. So we take velocity, differentiate it, obtain acceleration, put it here, and calculate the linear gain of relative instability. So we have typically, this is typical capillary scale, and we have something like 100 times growth. Not large, but not also negligibly small. And here it is how it developed. Now I want to pay, to attract your attention to the this process. So it's just related error, uh, dumped by viscosity, high viscosity, dumped by uh, surface tension, but still it developed due to deceleration. We, we decelerate by less dense water. We decelerate very dense gold. Therefore, this is typical condition for relative error instability, and it has time, and it has possibility to grow significantly to produce with nanoparticles, which may be after that collected in the experiment. I just, here it is the experiment. But it is a lot of such experiments. This is typic, <coughs> typical. We produce colloids of this very, very small particle, something like 10 nanometer in size. We use it for many applications. <coughs> And now I want to pay your attention to this part, how it developed in time. Uh, and this is molecular dynamic simulation with uh, embedded atom method uh, potential developed by Vasily Zhakovsky uh, for gold. And that's all.